Today, I'm um, really pleased to be joined once again by the great Tom Attlee from our recommended mortgage advisors at Trussell. Tom is highly experienced, and I wanted to reach out him out to him today because I wanted to get his thoughts and insights on, on the whole landscape of the mortgage world at the moment. Inflation is obviously rising, and my first question, Tom, if I may, is what does fly, rising inflation mean in the money markets and to the different products that are available? What, what, what does it look like out there at the moment? Yeah, so um, one of the ways the Bank of England is, is tackling to, to combat high inflation is to increase interest rates, which is the main factor in how much your mortgage payment is going to cost every month. So um, essentially, if inflation is high, the Bank of England will, will attempt to, uh, to reduce that by increasing interest rates. So um, whereas two years ago, if you, you took a mortgage, out and you had a good deposit and you were a perfect customer, you might see yourself paying an interest rate around 1%, 1%. some very lucky people. There were a few interest rates flying around at 0.9 something percent. Um, we're looking to start with a four now, um, two years later. So um, monthly mortgage payments, along with people's cost of living, food shopping, gas, electricity prices, et cetera, um, mortgage payments are, are also on the rise quite considerably. I, I want to get into that. In, in more detail but can you just give me a kind of layman's explanation between the, the money markets where where the, the the banks and the building societies can effectively borrow money from and then and then the actual mortgage market how does that sort of look how does it feel yeah well the, the banks obviously need to make a profit with everything they do so they they are looking at borrow they will borrow money from from larger markets for a certain amount for a certain percentage and then they'll add on a little bit of a cut okay. to themselves which is which is where where they you know they see their lending and they'll also obviously pay interest rates out on people with savings accounts but yes. i don't think that they're going up um proportionally to, to mortgage interest rates we're not seeing that at the moment so um we're seeing banks sometimes withdraw from the lending market a little bit so um there are a number of lenders that are just saying right at the minute we can't and it's normally the smaller players i'm not talking you know your, your big high street banks and building societies but a lot of the smaller players a lot of the banks and the smaller lenders that could do some quite niche or quite quirky things with a mortgage okay. if you, you had some obscure property you were looking to buy or a, a different type of income um you know they're, they're withdrawing from from the market some lenders are saying well actually we, we're a bit nervous about lending at the minute so we'll just make ourselves really uncompetitive and we'll put our rates up so we're seeing a reduction in the amount of mortgage products available um and is those that, are available is that almost fairly liquid it's always changing as to who who's in the market wants to lend and who doesn't particularly want to lend Interest rates are changing daily at the minute. The best mortgage product on the 5th of September may not be the best mortgage product on the 6th of September. So um, I know we're getting into that later, but yeah, we really need, you need to be dynamic. If you're buying a house, if you're thinking you need to be quite flexible, you need to be able to just sort of send your documents in, make a decision and, and get a mortgage um, agreed as quick as possible. Because when people, when us brokers are saying this, this rate isn't available for very long, we're not being your sort of, salesy car salesman yeah. type people we are we are genuinely saying at eight o'clock tonight this this is disappearing this deal so you need to you need to get us everything before then i guess it's exactly the same as a, as a consumer as a as a borrower when you're in the market and you're uncertain about the the economic conditions it's flight to safety just by really good stock don't yeah. try and be bold or dramatic or do anything untoward don't take any risks i guess it's exactly the same in the mortgage world they want to lend on quality that, they, that they've got confidence in they're not going to take little risks on on the short lease or the the, the, the higher flat or whatever it may be absolutely yeah um so you know as you say your people that are your, your people that are looking at buying some quirky wonderful thatched cottage or something that looks lovely or is worth a lot of money but you know some lenders are going to say no we're, we're not going to lend on that at the minute or we're not going to fund your 11th buy to let purchase because um, yes. you know, you're, you're a bit of a risky risky okay. investment at the minute aside from the property itself would you say that lenders are starting to look for different things in in the borrowers in, in your clients in the applicants is that changing at all it's not changing no the main the main thing is always um deposit so the more deposit you've got 
the better uh, proposition you are to a lender because if you've got a big deposit um, and the lender ever needs to repossess your property or make their money back quickly, if you've got a lot of equity in the property, the lender will be able to do that. So that can hide a multitude of sins. That's the main thing they would look at. The second would be affordability. So can you afford the payments now? Um, but also when we were assessing interest rate, when we were assessing mortgage payments at an interest rate of one or 2%, that's one thing. Now we're looking at, can you afford the mortgage now at four or 5%? And can you afford the mortgage in two or three years time if potentially rates are seven, eight or, or, or 9%? Hmm. That's the scary part. When, can I just take you back a little bit? Um, when those stress tests were, were, were worked out and, and, and they'd thank, thank the Lord that they were worked out because people are going to pay the mortgage and keep the roof over their head as a result of those stress tests they were probably quite annoying at the time but but <laughs> we are where we are were was the cost of what was the potential cost of living increase that we are now facing was that factored into those stress tests it was thank goodness um because yeah we were we were explaining to people that can afford a mortgage at one percent why they couldn't afford a mortgage at four or five percent and even as brokers, we were thinking, well, that's never going to happen. You know, the, yes. the interest rates were uh, low for 10, 50, ever since I've been doing the job, which started about 10 or 15 years ago, you know, interest rates have been have been very low. So none, none of us really that work here or a lot of customers can remember a time when interest rates were at 7 or 8%. So, um, yeah, if those stress rates came in and, and now most of the people that took mortgages over the last five or six years, you know, thankfully know that they can, they can afford them moving forward. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I took you back off track a little bit, but um, could you give me an idea of a standard deposit in terms of percentage? And I'm particularly interested in first time buyers. Yeah, for a first time buyer, you can get a mortgage with a 5% deposit. Right. Um, it's a higher interest rate. You will mm -hmm. need to be the, the, you have a very clean credit score. You'll have to have pretty standard income um and you know you'll you'll need to be buying a, a pretty straightforward property um new builds are very difficult to buy with, with smaller deposits new build properties so if you're thinking of buying a new build property particularly a new build flat be prepared to to have to be asked for a 10 or a 15 percent deposit I um, why that is. it's because uh, a new build flat you'll you'll pay a bit of a premium because it's brand new as yep. soon as you move into it your footsteps get on the floor and you sit yeah. on that sofa and, and you scratch okay. that lovely new kitchen counter. That's that's going yeah. down in value very quickly. Um, so you're paying a premium. So the, the expect if you're buying a new build property in the short term for that property potentially not to hold its value, although in the okay. long term that may not be the case. Who, who gets um, the best rates? So aside from deposit, who, who actually in, in the market gets the best interest rates? The people with the bigger equity in the property. So we're generally talking older people because they've had time to build up equity in their yeah. properties and they're building they may be buying their second or third or fourth property and they've, they've spent 10 20 years paying a mortgage down um or re obviously if you're remortgaging if you've had a, if you've owned your property for a number of years and you know you, you're in your 10th or 11th year of paying off that mortgage you're going to have a lot of equity in your property so yeah. you're going to have the lowest interest rates yeah but it's still going to be much higher than it was a little while ago it's still going to start with a free i think phil i don't think yeah. you, no, i don't think we can get anything lower than that no though. Um, you mentioned remortgaging. Have you got any advice or thoughts on tips if somebody is considering remortgaging? And, and I've been talking to people who are wondering, look, my mortgage hasn't expired yet. I've got another year or two left on my fixed term. I've got, if I if I remortgage, I will face a redemption penalty. But I feel that interest rates are going to go up. So I'm interested in, you know, what's, what's the best way to turn? And I fully appreciate that every individual circumstances is unique. But any particular tips or thoughts on that topic as a whole? Yeah, absolutely. Just speak to a mortgage broker, someone that's going to give you the benefits of their advice and they'll go over the options. You know, we can do that. We can look at someone. I've got a, a handy little calculator spreadsheet. Okay. I can put your figures in and say, yes, stay where you are um, because it's not worth paying your £5,000 early repayment penalty. Or if you take this rate with x lender it might cost a little bit more at the beginning but it will tie you in for the next five years so you're not coming to us in a year's time when interest yeah. rates are potentially higher than they are now so speak to a broker also if your fixed rate deal is coming up in the next six months don't leave it until the last minute speak to a broker if your if your rate ends on the 1st of december speak to a broker on the 1st of june we can secure a rate for you on the 1st of june um so it doesn't matter what happens in the next six months that rate is banked and is yours um straight away 
if by some miraculous reason interest rates start going down, you get the best of both worlds. We can reassess it and, and reapply on a lower rate. But if interest rates continue to go up, which yeah. is what we're expecting, you'll get the rate that you you bank on the day you make the application. So I like that. I like that. In silence. <laughs> but but um but can you take it beyond six months? Could you do it a year? Could you no. unfortunately not? There, you know what? It. There are some lenders that used to be able to do that, but I think they've seen what was happening. And and, and yeah, no, six, six months is, is the longest that I've seen that we can we can hold our eight for. So if you're on a fixed rate, you're worried about interest rates rising, get in front of the curve, speak to an advisor and plow ahead. Yeah, it's a minefield of information. Yeah. You, can, you can Google it and be told all sorts of different things. But if you speak to an advisor, yeah. they know what type of transaction you're looking at. They know how to do these calculations. Yeah. They know how to assess your situation. And they can tell you very clearly, yes, it's time to switch. No, it's not. See, Tom, you made it sound quite simple that you you plugged it in your little calculator and it told you what to do. But there's a lot there's a lot more moving parts than that, isn't there? There is, yeah, because we obviously we can't predict how much interest rates are going to maybe increase or, no. or stay the same. But we can we can definitely say that you know your rate of um, zero point nine percent. You know how long you're going to be paying that for combined that, with your level of penalty if you pay that mortgage off and get exactly we add your early repayment penalty on and we look yeah. at what potentially could happen and, and we'll, we'll give you we'll, we'll set out the options and the risks involved and, and potentially we might say that this is going to cost more now um yes but it would be less than if you come to us next year um yeah. so you know people can make a decision based on that well it's a big topic um um so really useful to, to get your advice and, and thoughts uh, i guess what you're trying to say is if you need advice go and talk to trussell absolutely <laughs> yeah go and talk to trussell we've got, we've got people here waiting to talk to you definitely um you know, it is your mortgage payments are the biggest payment of your life. So you might as well get some help with it. It is a complicated market. It's a complicated time and it's very much a changing time. So we, we, I and, and, and our audience at Move IQ very much appreciate your, your words of guidance and, and consideration. Thank you, Tom. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Thank you. A few words of warning. Your home may be repossessed if you don't keep up repayments on your mortgage. You may have to pay an early repayment charge to your existing lender if you remortgage. Individual savings may vary. And thanks again for tuning in.